Tales of a Legion Project Podcast, Legion of Superheroes, issue number one. Welcome to the Tales of a Legion Project podcast. This is where Peter and I talk about Legion of Superheroes comics and other things outside of the numbered issues of the Baxter run. Peter, this is a momentous occasion. Because you're not Eric, you're someone totally different. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Eric's doppelganger from Earth 47, 247. Oh man, I screwed that up already. Yes. Now you're right. We actually get to talk about and a current, at the moment, on the stands, huzzah, huzzah, an, an honest-to-gosh, real Legion of Superheroes ser- series back at DC Comics. Which we haven't had for, what, about almost 10 years? Uh, no, I don't think it's been that long since the, oh, yeah, since okay. the end of the... I was, yeah, I was trying to do math in my head on the fly, and that never works yeah. well, so... Whenever that New 52 series ended. So we're talking like, what, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there, 2015. Yeah. All right, yes. But yeah, a new series, and we're wrapping it up into a Tales episode because our regular episodes are getting really long, and we wanted to make sure we had enough time to talk about this new issue, uh, that we gave it enough of our energy and enough of our you know, attention, uh, because it is a momentous occasion, as as you said. So this is the fourth Tales episode. As Eric mentioned, um, we get to talk about a whole bunch of different things. So yes, we are going to talk about the Legion of Superheroes, uh, ish, new issue number one. And um, that came out, just so people uh, know, that came out on November 6th. We're recording this on uh, December December the 8th, and the second issue was supposed to have shipped by now, but it's not going to ship until uh, December 18th, so we get to squeeze this episode in. But because it's a Tales episode, and because it's a new issue number one, and there's excitement, I kind of hit on this idea of this could be a really good way to uh, compare and contrast and read other Legion comics specifically other Legion reboot issues. So we're going to talk predominantly about the Bendis and Ryan Sook issue. And then we're going to, at the back half of this episode, talk about two other, quote-unquote, first issues. Legion of Superheroes issue zero. This is uh, the what they call the reboot, uh, the Archie Legion and that's back from uh, 1994, right? Yeah. Um, 25 years ago. We're going to talk about that because that was uh, the first time that the Legion got um, rebooted for a, a new generation, if you want to say. And then the second issue we're going to talk about, or the third issue we're going to talk about, is Legion of Superheroes issue number one from 2005, which people call the three-boot era. So doing this for a number of reasons, you know, we've said it before, I love to go back in time and see how things connect or grow or evolve. It gives Eric and I a a way to talk about other eras of the Legion that we may never get to or not for like, you know, years. Um, And it's a way to hold like a, a magnifying glass up to this new issue. So I'll be really curious to hear Eric's thoughts about this new issue, and then you all get to hear our thoughts about those older issues and how it all compares, and it's just one big Legion salad today. (laughs) Legion salad, that's good. What's the dressing on this salad, Peter? Uh, Horaz. Horaz dressing. (laughs) Ooh, can't wait to get to that. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Uh, any, Any thoughts to any of that? 
Uh, no, I, th- I think this is a, the, the, uh, it'll be a good discussion, um, especially going into those past reboot issues. Just if, if someone's listening to this episode, if this is your first episode to the Legion project, tales of the Legion project, um, we have talked about previous new Legion appearances in some of our other episodes, but if you want a quick rundown, this new Legion has appeared in Supergirl 33, Superman 14, 15, and 16, and then the two-issue Legion of Superheroes Millennium Prelude to this series, and you can hear all our thoughts on previous episodes about those uh, random issues. But um, we're going to talk about Legion of Superheroes number one. All right, uh, we'll do a synopsis here. Uh, But first, the credits for this book. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis does the script, which I thought was interesting that they they say it's a script. Ryan Sook on pencils. Sook and Wade Von Grabager on inks. Jordi Belair doing a wonderful job on colors. Dave Sharp doing letters. Brittany Holzer, associate editor. Brian Cunningham, editor, with a cover by Ryan Sook, which incidentally is uh, the same cover or the same image as the the um, uh, print uh, that he was uh, um, dispensing at the uh, Rose City Comic Con this last time that I went. Mm-hmm. So I thought mm-hmm. that was nice. Uh, Peter, did you get the the uh, variant covers as well? I did. I did. Yes, I, I did. I did not. <laughs> anyway, uh, so synopsis for Legion of Superheroes, number one. Yay! Uh, a, uh, a caped person pursues a carmorant, which incidentally, uh, which is a ship here. But incidentally, I, I looked this up, Peter. There is a tactical robotics carmorant comor- used by the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, it's an unmanned flying car, which I thought was, well, one is neither here nor there, but uh, interesting parallel there. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, they're pursuing what uh, what is what is defined as a carmorant through the Bloodhaven sewer system on planet Gotham. What? Planet Gotham? The caped person is shot and the ship crashes to the street as this person attempts to calm the crowd by announcing Age of Hero stuff. He's almost shot again. He then subdues an alien whom he refers to as, quote, Horaz Trash. I don't know about that uh, salad dressing now, Peter. And recovers a container saying, it's real. He's blasted and drops the container, and his attacker then retrieves that container and asks the young man if he knows what it can do, to which... He replies, it can save a planet. We learn this antagonist is Mordru, for those of us who know that character, this is a big deal, referred to as, who, who, who is referred to as a demon gangster. Before Mordru, Mordru can attack the young man again, he is attacked by Wildfire and Karate Kid with Starboy floating nearby. They are, as they announce, the Legion of Superheroes. A short fight ensues before Mordru is defeated. The Legionnaires know the former caped one. He's cranky Joe Na from Rimbor. Joe then opens the container to reveal, dun-dun-dun, Aquaman's trident. We then switch scenes to Saturn Girl and Superboy arriving in the 31st century, specifically New Metropolis, the home of the, as D- and DC Comics proudly presents it, Legion of Superheroes. The assembled Legionnaires greet them. We get a page explaining the misnamed... Frichtman tags. Superboy thinks they are in a bottle city and freaks out uh, because bottled cities are a, quote, thing with his, quote, his people. And we see Rose from Legion of Superheroes Millennium in just one page. Superboy's slight panic attack allows for an aerial view of New Metropolis, which is the Legion headquarters. John and we discover that Earth, New Earth, uh, first seen in Le- in the uh, aforementioned Legion of Superheroes Millennium. Issue number two is a collection of dome cities. Cosmic Boy attempts to get Superboy back to Legion HQ when a red alert is sounded at Legion HQ. Uh, uh, this is the arrival of Joe and the uh, the three Legionnaires we saw at the beginning. There is much discussion about Aquaman's Trident, uh, what Aquaman's Trident can do, which, in- which includes possibly bringing back Earth's oceans, Cue the arrival of more Horaz and cut to the ending where the president of the United Planets is none too pleased with the recovery of the Trident and the arrival of Superboy. Wow, there's a lot going on in this issue. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, before we give our general thoughts, you mentioned the covers. I did get the other two covers, uh, you know, because I got a random uh, $8 just floating around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no more than that. There, there were there were five, four ninety nine, um, which is why I didn't. I decided not to get some of those. Yeah. Well, you know, discount comic book service, blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got the two other ones. One of them by Jim Chung, which I really like. Um, it just has uh, the Trinity of the Legion floating mm-hmm. uh, in front of the Legion symbol. Um, and uh, it, the colors are kind of muted. Uh, you can see their specific costuming, but the colors the colors really muted. Uh, nothing really to say to it other than it's the new Trinity, Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, and Saturn Girl. And we've had plenty of other covers emulating, you know, the, the founders or showcasing the founders. So, uh, yeah, I, I did get that. I think partly what's interesting about it, and, and this is something in my notes in, in terms of the issue itself, when when Ryan Sook leaves this book or gets a filler, I don't mean if, I mean when, um, mm-hmm. other artists have to, have to draw his designs. <laughs> and um, they're complicated. So it's kind of nice to see Jim Chung, who is also very detailed himself. So, uh, you know, we just get another artist's rendition. Um, just like Yvonne Hayes in the Superman books, who also did a fantastic job with these costumes because they are busy. Mm-hmm. And then um, the other Ryan Sook one, which I, I think I like even more, um, is uh, is the viewer looking at a, a view screen um, basically looking at the uh, orientation that the Legion of Superheroes have created for John Kent, for Superboy, uh, that they talk about in the issue. And you can see Superboy pushing the button begin. And you get to see some Legion icons, and it's, it's, it's almost like looking at a mission monitor board. Um, Computo AI5, welcome John Kent to your 21st century orientation. And we get some story stuff in it. You know, we get the destruction of Earth, the inauguration of United Planets, the formation of the League, uh, excuse me, the Legion, um, Legion ideology, historical constitution, treaties, science police stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, it, it's an interesting storytelling uh, cover. Um, it may not necessarily stand out if you're just sort of looking at it, but I kind of dug it. And um, so, um, yeah, I like it. I like I like those two variants. Um and I like the main cover, the main cover, as you as you mentioned, um, since we're digging back in time to all these other Legion series, uh, the main cover kind of looks like the Tom Feaster, Tony Harris covers during the Legion run with uh, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. They did a whole bunch of covers. Um, issue 25 has this same sort of thing where it's like Superboy flying with the other Legionnaires. Um, the only reason it's kind of in my brain is because, um, I managed to pick up a whole bunch of those issues for 25 cents not too long ago, ones that I were, was missing. So, um, yeah, legions, legionnaire members flying towards the camera or near the camera or whatever is it's, that's not strange. It's not strange. So, um, these covers are, are, are all nicely designed, I think. Yeah, and that that uh, the Legion uh, series that you referenced—that's something that I am uh, not at all familiar with. I have the issues; I bought them a couple of years ago, but I haven't read them. So this—that's all new Legion territory for me when I when I eventually get to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flip through those covers around the twenties, and 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 you'll go, oh, oh. yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking at it now. Uh, yeah. Twenty-five. Yeah, that's that's definitely you can see a connection there. Yeah. Uh, uh, one other point about the main cover that, um, um, I don't know if I noticed before, Lightning Lad's eyes, uh, he has heterochromia, I guess it's called. Um, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're different colors. Right. And I, I almost wondered if that's because he's a twin. Ah. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of interesting if Light Lass also has, uh, that same thing, but in reverse, so, yeah. you know, something that really connects them could be fun. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that either. That's 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 a nice detail. 
Uh, so as the cover says, the adventures of the 31st century begins here. Shall we give our big thoughts? Yes. All right. What did you think? <laughs> I'm nervous. Well, like I, <laughs> like I mentioned at the end of the synopsis, boy, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, a lot of characters and, but, uh, I felt like, uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Ryan Sook did a, a pretty good job of not overwhelming us with with too much. Um, I, I feel like we got the, a sufficient amount of of whelming, uh, sort of like what Superboy is going through. So I, I, I the way I approached it or felt the way about or how I felt about it was was I they did a really good job of making me feel like what I imagine Superboy is feeling like, um, except for the whole the whole uh, dome city panic attack thing. Um, but, but, uh, you know, overall it was uh, a nice way to, you know, structurally that we get that beginning with just a few characters, a little bit of action. And then we, we, um, uh, transition into Superboy coming into it. And if you've been reading the, uh, the events in the Superman title and, uh, you mentioned the Supergirl issue, uh, and then also super, uh, sorry, the Legion of Superheroes millennium, um, you get a good. You already have a good sense of where we're at at that moment, and and then we and then you know it just expands from there to show us the universe. You know, in this case, uh, New Earth, and we get we get some villains introduced. We get some intrigue at the end with uh, with uh, the the president, and so you know I thought that was a, a pretty well constructed story uh, for a first issue, um, but boy, there are a lot of characters. You know, if not if not uh, named, they are, are certainly shown. And I think Peter, I counted um, twenty nine legionnaires. Is that right? Oh wow, I didn't count. Yeah, wow. I, 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 it feels it feels like that. <laughs> well, and here's here's the thing. I counted. I don't. I I must have counted several different images. The cover. Um, there, there's, uh, that first, uh, bit and we'll probably get, talk, talk about the specific stuff here in a bit, but there's, there's the first introduction of Superboy to the Legion in the 31st century. Um, I think it's a two page spread. And then later towards the end, there's another two page spread showing the Legionnaires. There's also another two page spread earlier in that where they're all kind of in silhouette. And I even counted that, but I've, I've counted these, these things multiple times and, at one point, I counted thirty characters, but I think I was counting uh, Triplica Girl twice in there, um, <laughs> which which was kind of difficult because uh, the way that it's drawn in some of these in some of these uh, uh, images. But anyway, I think I think we're at twenty nine characters for the Legion, including Superboy, including Invisible Kid. Oh, I didn't even. <laughs> there we go. That's thirty. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no idea. I can't. Who who is Invisible Kid in this? In these images, yeah. Some of these characters are are very recognizable uh, for us, uh, our us older view uh, viewers, uh, readers, and some of them are new and uh, or or they look, I think, sufficiently different that uh, I was questioning who they might be. Yeah, we uh, we don't really. I don't think we see Invisible Kid talking in this issue but we did in the millennium issue number two mm -hmm. um when they were taking the picture the, the big legion picture in that issue so that's the only reason why I, I i thought we should really include him even if we haven't seen him no pun mm -hmm. intended yeah so my first initial takeaway when i read it was no lie uh i got to the end and i went wait what <laughs> what whoa 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 and i actually did not go back and read it right away i didn't read it again right away because i kind of was disappointed um mm. some of it is because it felt like i had read bits of this issue before uh and this is before i thought of the idea of reading some of the other reboots but, um, you know, maybe it was just some of that lingering memory of, of, oh, right, this is a reboot and this is what they do and this is how you introduce a large cast and um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I was kind of like, hmm, hmm. 
I think the biggest thing that kind of initially brushed against my 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 um enjoyment of the issue was or pushed it away was because Rose being brushed off so quickly after we yeah. had two issues screaming her importance um that kind of turned me off and then I also felt like we we never really got in this first issue what the legion is about even even the little bit that they mentioned in Superman for instance where they talk about you know um John Kent being the guy who came up with the idea of the United Planets means that we now celebrate Unity Day forever and ever for a thousand years, and um, the Legion is the personification of those ideas. You know, we got a lot of that from the Superman stories, from their Superman appearances. But in this issue, while there are hints of uh, of a Legion organization, um. I didn't get, I, I felt like I didn't really get, <laughs> I didn't get that. So then I read it again just recently, and as you kind of mentioned, um, when you put yourself in Superboy's position, um, that's when I think the story speaks uh, a little more to a first issue, a little more to introducing us to this world, because what we do get, I think, is... Uh, the beginnings of the world around them, the galaxy around them or galaxies around them and Metropolis and New Earth and um, a few cultures here and there. We get that kind of stuff and that made me feel a little better the second time I read it. Um, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for more. Um, I'm I'm hoping for more. When we when I got done with this issue, I was like, okay, uh, I I want more. Well, yeah, I I agree with that. Uh, that's one of the things I liked about this in terms of a first issue is that we get a taste, and it, it's it's this is a hard thing I think, especially for Legion fans like us, is yeah. that we haven't had um, a strong I'll say a strong Legion book in a while, uh, probably since the you know, the, the Baxter, one, I'll say, um, you know, cause I haven't, and I say that out of ignorance, partly because I haven't read a lot of the stuff in between, um, uh, the, the end of the Baxter run. And, um, when we get to the 2005 Legion reboot, mm -hmm. uh, so I, you know, I, I don't know if there was, if that was a strong, uh, if those were strong Legion books. Um, but for the ones that I, I, I have read, uh, this is, uh, I think it does a pretty good job of uh, introducing certain elements. Um, but at the same time, like I said, like I was saying, uh, we Legion fans come into this with all this foreknowledge and these expectations. And uh, if it's not, I think sometimes we, and I'm not saying that you're doing this, Peter, but I, but I think generally speaking, um, uh, uh, people tend to unfairly, judge uh, the book based on all that baggage that comes before and i'm susceptible to that as well um you know i, I kept going through this going well this is not my legion <laughs> <laughs> you know this is you know my legion is what we are talking about on the legion project podcast uh, uh this is something else and while there are certain touchstones there are certain recognizable aspects you know this is not that uh but flip side of that coin is that well yeah that's that's right but this is this is the new thing so what about it works and uh, uh hopefully uh i'm going to come at this at um from a perspective anyway of uh try not to bring that baggage along i guess and so then then you know that's why i was like trying to, to get at um in my reaction to this issue what is it about this this story uh, my legion knowledge and and love aside, what about this story works and what doesn't work about it? No, I t I I totally fall on that same line. I mean, I, I'm I can let um, new uh, versions of characters. I sort of oh, I'm sort of good at letting like that go. You know, mm -hmm. I think I'm I think I'm on record. Um, either. 
I don't know where. I, th- I was talking about um, some Rebirth books or New 52 books or something like that. And um, I hadn't read a lot of what came before it, but I jumped in. I don't know if it was like a Superman or Wonder Woman or whatever. But you know what? The characters were the characters. Even if they did have new origins or new status quos because of New 52 or Rebirth, I thought, as I was reading, I was like, it's all the same characters. It's Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. It's Lois Lane. Mm-hmm. It's Jimmy Olsen. You know, like, you get it. You fall in line and you sort of get it. And and because we are such longtime readers, um, it's very, it's easier to kind of see all those connections and and. Uh, so I didn't mind it, you know, I, whatever I, whatever it was I read, it might even have been Bendis's Superman or whatever. Um, so as I'm reading this, you know, it's kind of the same thing, you know, futuristic 31st century, bunch of characters from all over, you know, we see a few powers, we don't see many, we see a few, Mm -hmm. um, uh, a bunch of teenagers together, uh, living in a city, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Totally get it. Totally get it. Um, when I when I kind of think of what it, this would be like to a new reader, and I've seen one or two reactions on Twitter where somebody I think I forget who it was said something like they've never read Legion before. They picked this up and they were like, "Nope, that's not for me." And I was like, "Whoa!" Um, I've seen some reviews. You know, this kind of falls a little bit like if I had to give it a number, the the majority of the reviews fell somewhere between like six and eight out of ten. You know. Um, um, when you average it all out, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to say, what would this be like for a new reader? Because I've never been, I haven't been a new reader in a long time. And, um, I think you're right. Like, um, once, once I let go of like, yeah, this is not my, my legion. Um, uh, well, I, it's not even that I had to let it go. It's just, you know, as, as you're sort of watching Bendis and company play this story out, play this first issue out um it's gonna take time there's something very television about it a little bit um i think the cliffhanger is terrible oh yeah the the last page i think the cliffhanger is terrible so you said about bendis doing scripts um i kind of wonder how much of the story is being told through ryan sook's artwork and Mm -hmm. maybe through their communication very much like the way Paul Levitz used to do with Giffen, um, where there's an outline and Sook is just allowed to sort of play within that outline. And I wonder if that speaks to why, while there is a lot in this issue, I, I wanted a little more depth. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, this is going to be a hard sell for, for me. I'm, um, um, I don't want to, I don't want to constantly drag on it because it is a Legion book. And I want to love it. And there are some interesting things. There are some interesting things. So do you, why don't we start there? What what worked for this issue? What worked for you? Well, again, back to the uh, kind of what, touching on what I said before. But, you know, the, to me, this the I thought they did a, a pretty good job of uh, you know, thinking of it from a new reader standpoint. Um and even just uh, you know a, a lapsed reader in in my case, uh, we get a little bit of inf- information, a little bit of character introduction, and then you know and slowly we we build up to this larger cast, and then we get a little bit of the the the, the world, like I said, and and then we get we we end in that terrible cliffhanger, and I I totally agree with you on that. And I thought you know structurally this this make this is a pretty good first issue for for new people I, I i i'm actually really surprised that uh what you just said about the the reactions to this um i i i'm I, now i have to go i guess find this stuff because i'm now i'm really curious as to why uh these people don't think this is a, a good jumping on point i guess for for this new legion book uh is it the number of characters is it bendis because you know there's this is a very bendisy book um, yeah, yeah. just in the dialogue. And that was one of the things I was going to m- maybe touch on with you and ask you about. Um, uh, you know, there, if people like me, I, I like Bendis and I tolerate his, his idiosyncrasies, but I know a lot of people out there, uh, uh, some, some of my close friends who don't like Bendis. They don't like the way, you know, they don't like his dialogue, for example. Um, and this is, like I said, this is very Bendisy. Um, 
uh, I think the the fault, the only f- real fault of this visually is there. There's just there is a lot on the pages, um, a lot of characters, a lot of um, things, and not all of it. You know, uh, I, I I complimented at the top of this uh, when I mentioned Jordi Belair, um, but there's a lot of dark pages in here too to you know to obfuscate the characters or the situation or something um and is so to me that kind of that kind of coloration uh just kind of muddies the page uh if it's not done i, I hate to i hate to sound critical but not done well and I, I think some of that's going on here uh that's just you know my personal take on it so you know there's some production things about this book that that really kind of um, um, grates on me but the, but the story itself I'm, I'm I'm pretty okay with generally speaking that that I don't think I answered your question I think you we wanted to get into some specific things right <laughs> <laughs> no let's talk well let's talk about the dialogue because I think um, um, that is a I think that is a major port part part of the book um, and I I agree I I uh, I also didn't don't mind Bendis's dialogue. I, I sort of feel like, um, you know, you either gravitate to an author's voice or you don't. And mm-hmm. that, and that's totally fair. Um, but you know, if you keep reading an author that, that you don't enjoy, then I, that's really on you more than anything, regardless if it's like your favorite team or your favorite genre or whatever, you know, um, there are times where I think Bendis's dialogue doesn't help um, when it gets to be a little too quippy or a little too cute. Um, yeah. um, and one of the comments I read from one, a, a reviewer, a reviewer was, you know, a lot of this dialogue seems interchangeable. You could, even if chameleon boy was saying it, you could give it to white witch and it wouldn't matter. You know, there's, there's, there's not a lot of sort of like delineation, different, different voices in terms of how they speak. Um, and, and I think that that's a fair criticism, I think, but I do think you get, I think you get a lot of information when, who is it? Wildfire. When he says, boy, Jonah, he's cranky, but then again, he is from Rimbor, you know, like, okay, that's character stuff right there. It's little, it's small, but when you have a cast of 30, that's what you got to do. Um, so I did like that, you know, mm-hmm. um, when Superboy says to Saturn girl, boy, you're real, you're real, you're real formal. And she goes, yeah, I am, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> there's an eagerness there. I thought that actually was cute. I thought that was, that spoke to Saturn girl's personality. Um, the way yeah, that karate, that, go ahead. Sorry, I just interjected and please go on. Um, that, that scene with Saturn girl and Superboy, I thought it was more, probably one of the best in the book. It, it showed... Superboy's tension and it showed Saturn Girl's excitement. Um, and you gotta you gotta just give over to it, you know. When when we see Karate Kid and Wildfire and Starboy the first time, and Karate Kid's all about names, you know, I'm the the karate kid, and this is the Legion of Superheroes. And um Wildfire's like, All right, you're not gonna I guess we gotta do that, <laughs> you know. Like Okay, that's excitement. That that there's something about being in the Legion that they are excited about. Whether it's because this is the day where Superboy joins, or it's one of their first sort of major public outings. Like I get that, and it has to come from the dialogue. So if you blow over a lot of that stuff, I do think you miss uh, some of the characterizations. So mm-hmm. so f- on that level. Um, you know, you have all those characters who are able to tell Superboy what's going on with New Earth. And you just sort of, it's not just coming from one person. It's a bunch of young teens, um, you know, and I've had discussions with college age kids and young and high school kids, you know, doing shows and stuff. Yeah, when they talk, they all talk, they interject, they 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 fill in the gaps. So uh, I, I actually feel like that was uh, one of the strong points. Uh, for the book. Mm -hmm. What did you, uh, was there anything that, um, since we are older established readers, the little bit of Legion lore that's dropped throughout the book, does that work for you? Do you think it's just a hook? Do you, what'd you think about that? 
Well, I didn't, I mean, I didn't really feel like there was a whole lot of Legion lore that was dropped in here. Um, there's, like you said, there's a, a couple, a couple bits of dialogue that kind of talks to it, you know, like the Rimbor thing. We, we, if you've read Legion of Superheroes Millennium, you already know about New Earth and all this stuff. So that big reveal wasn't all that, you know, um, revealing. Uh, but you do get a sense of, you know, uh, the, uh, well, you get, you get a sense of Superboy's reaction to that. You know, that, that was, that was okay. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like we're really low on that on Legion lore in this issue. Uh, it's just we're throwing a bunch of characters and ideas at at the the reader. Um, this is not this is not a uh, you know your your planet Earth uh, in the thirty first century. This is a totally different thing, and something happened to where they, you know they're domed cities, but and uh, the Aquaman's Trident is very important to to you know maybe bringing back that Earth. So, you know, they get a lot of, you get, not only do you have Superboy you, uh, as, as a link to the past, but you've got this Aquaman Triton thing and the Age of Heroes, they talk about that. So you get a lot of, the, a lot of these connections between the past and, this, and the future, which I kind of like, but there's not a lot of depth to them, I would say. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a matter of the characters, you know, who these characters are. We, we know about Joe a little bit. He's cranky because he's from Rimbor. And, and like you said, the, uh, the, uh, we get that that I thought was a wonderful scene uh, when we get Karate Kid and Wildfire talking there and Starboy's kind of hanging out there. Um, you get a sense of their personalities. Uh, but that's, to me, that's about it. And then you got that that intrigue, like I said, that, that potential intrigue at the, with the, the ending of this. Um, you know, uh, what's all that about and why is this a big deal? And and it, for me, the, this book just, posed a lot of questions that I want answers to and not and my reaction wasn't oh this sucks because I don't have the answers it was oh I want to I want to know more why is the why are these things the way they are um, and then you know another layer on that for me is that well this is different from you know quote unquote my legion so how is it different why is it different and will I appreciate the differences uh, will I will I gravitate towards them? Will I accept them and then and then let it go? So then I can just enjoy what this book is supposed to be, whatever that book is, whatever the book is supposed to be, because I don't think we know what that is yet. Right. And with those changes, what kind of potential new stories do we get out of it? Exactly. Or interactions or relationships or things like yeah, that. Yeah. And are we going to is this just going to be as as in previous reboots? Um, uh, well, at least one reboot that I know of uh they just retold old legion stories and just did them differently yeah i hope they don't go that route yeah me either and part of that the the one of the things that seems to be happening a lot is um we we got a couple mentions of the of the 21st century uh aquaman's trident as you mentioned this planet um gotham which i think think is in the andromeda galaxy i think that's what they're uh, they mentioned the andromeda galaxy so i think that's probably where it's from uh and even just the the madam president madam honor president uh at the end where she says what superboy's here the son of of superman from the 20th century she says um i don't know if that's a mistake or if they're I, i don't know um even even that is kind of a draw back to what we're familiar with. And then Bendis does a few jokes or a few lines here and there where somebody will say uh, something, uh, like Starboy says, uh, uh, hit it or, or something like that. And Wildfire goes, huh? And he goes, oh, it's just, it's a 21st century idiom. You know, it's just a, a, a phrase they used. So that's no stranger to the Legion stuff, but... Um, in, in terms of that kind of dialogue, I hope it doesn't play out too much. Um, but this connection back to the to what we know, this age of heroes, a little worried because I also know what's what's gonna uh, who's gonna pop up in some of the later issues. And I think you said you're staying away from from that kind of stuff. But and I'm not I'm not gonna say it. But I'm like, mm, I hope he's not going to use the the 31st century to tell stories about characters from the 21st century, but because he can't write their book, he's going to bring them here. I'm like, mm, mm, yeah, 
don't do that. Don't do that. Don't look backwards so much. So, but but on the other hand, uh, speaking of that, uh, that's a, pot- a potential good approach to bringing new readers in because if they like those those characters that they're familiar with in in the current continuity, you know, in the twenty first century characters, you bring them into the book to ease potentially ease the reader into the thirty first century, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I, but no, I totally agree with you on that. I, just, I don't need that. Um, uh, and I think I know the character that you're talking about, because um, uh, I, I, I did read the solicit for. I think it, it was issue three. Is that the one you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I just speaking of that, I just, uh, I, I just got my my delivery from DCBS, and which included the the previews, and I saw what the solicitation was for issue four. Um, which is we're getting into the origin of the Legion. So we are going to get, you know, I, I can see why I can see that Bendis and company is, is doing, they're just like, here you go, people, here's some stuff about the Legion in the 31st century. And we get a, a bit of plot, uh, probably a little bit more character development or character introduction. I won't say development. Um, and then we're going to sling you back to the past so that you have a context. And so from, from a storytelling standpoint, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, if, if you're going to dive right in to get people excited and, and show a lot of things as opposed to building up from little bits and pieces to a larger uh, canvas, mm-hmm. uh, that, that makes a lot of sense to me that they would do it that way. But uh, considering that the, uh, like you said, the, the second issue was delayed in, in its release. Yeah. Um, uh, and you, you and I had talked about this, I think, over twitter or text or something but it, it concerns me that that uh um uh, given ryan sook's uh how long it takes him he kind of has a, a reputation of, of of being slow at doing his stuff i mean it's it's great stuff but you don't want to kill the buzz of a new a new launch like this and this 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 book is a is a big deal to yeah. us and to a lot of other people so you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to um uh, kill that buzz by having things not ship on time, uh, skipping months, you know, that kind of stuff. That's just, that's just not good. Well, I think it's a big deal to DC though, as well, because this is a corner of their universe that used to be very popular and very profitable. Whether it was well, yeah, in the eighties. Yeah. The, the, sorry, the, 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 the very books that we're talking about in the main Legion project podcast is that time period. That's when the Legion was at its height. Right. And we, they haven't been that for a very long time. And even in the in the '90s, they they managed to have two titles, uh, some mini series that were going mm-hmm. on. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, the Legion is a part of their universe, publishing wise, that could give them um, another corner of uh, super heroics to dig into. You know. Some people say they are the DC's X-Men. Some people say they should be as popular as, as like the Teen Titans in terms of other media. So whether it's a tease or having a couple characters on the Supergirl TV show, or although I'm not watching it, I think you and I both know that there was a slight tease at the end of one of the latest Young Young Justice seasons. Mm-hmm. Um this is a team that um, they want to get a, a hold of in terms of its books because eventually that means they could spin it off into other things. And I think they had a they just were having a real hard time with that. And you're right. It will kill momentum if this book doesn't deliver um, in the way that I think – like I think Bendis' Young Justice is just great. I just think the whole Wonder Comics line is just great. I'm not saying that they are the best comics out there right now, but they are fun. And again, it's Bendis being able to play with other DC uh, properties um, in, a, in a confined book. And Wonder Twins is fun and Dial H and we're going to get Amethyst. And um, so you want this book to speak to the people that are maybe following that line or that are just interested in joining the Legion for the first time. So you're right. If there's a reason, if, if I get a little heavy on it, it's because it, 
I'm not the only one that's putting importance on it. I think DC was too, you know, mm-hmm. in the buildup. So you better deliver. And it's not going to be like a sleeper hit like Ultimate Spider-Man was, you know. Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, I didn't read it, but at the time, that book just came out. It wasn't, it didn't become Ultimate Spider-Man until, you know, a year or two or three uh, after its initial release. So you can't just copy that formula again um, or try to copy that formula Um this has had a lot of high profile stuff in terms of images and a prelude m- micro series and appearances in Superman. Uh, yeah, I, I, you, you want it to succeed. You want it to succeed. Unfortunately, I think where some of the criticism of the story and the dialogue is right is that there are some tricks that Bendis is, Bendis is using that feel. Like, I've read them before. I think I I might be repeating myself. So I'm hoping that the reveal of the Aquaman's trident, um, talking about New Earth, um, the largeness of the group. I really like the whole idea that Legion Headquarters is not just in Metropolis. It is Metropolis. Like, (laughs) that's great. That's like, that's like taking future concepts and, and pushing it even further. Awesome. Love that. So my hope is that this whole idea about the oceans, um, uh, you know, which we'll get to in issue two, is this a way to really cement how grand the Legion can be, that they can build worlds like that. This could be fun. Like, I, I, I get that. I, I, I hope that they use the team to really do something and not just be a teen book um in the vein of like an Archie book or something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Where they just yeah. have random kooky adventures, but we're just going to focus on them talking to each other. Well, it's got to be, there's got to be something big. It's got to be something big, whether it takes a year to get to or whatever. Uh, something has to happen that cements this book within the DC universe or it's doomed. How's that for sour, sour grapes? I was going to say that's, <laughs> that's pretty dire there. <laughs> I mean, hell, the way they rolled this out, the whole intro of this this team, this new issue, this new series, uh, I, I, I think I might have said it before. I'm like, okay, in like a year or two, I feel like we're going to get a Legion event. You know, Bendis did mm-hmm. Superman and we got a v- event Leviathan, which was basically a Superman uh, event. And like, I feel like he's putting so much into this Legion thing and so much into the millennium aspect that uh, it feels like we should be it might be building to something like to uh, something else, something big. I have no evidence of it, but again, we got to cement this book within the DC universe. We just have to. Well, and Millennium specifically, you know, was as we as we talked about in previous episodes, uh was very not legion focused. And we it, it was more of a, a a romp through DC's future histories. And so I think you're right. I th- uh, that to me that that is uh, portending to be uh, not pretending, but but portentous for <laughs> what could be coming here. Uh, DC, or you know, at least Bendis uh, and DC by association, you know, by allowing these these things to be published as they are. Um, that's an important aspect of the of the DC universe that has laid you know pretty quiet for the last I don't know how many years. Uh, and so, with with the inter- reintroduction of those things, and and regardless of how we may feel about some of that stuff, and and the the the, the timeline of it, um, it it seems to be a big deal. And and I think you're right. We 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 probably are going to be building up to something that is going to be uh, not only cosmic in nature, but also throughout time, and maybe has something to do with that whole five G history of the DC universe that uh, Dan DiDio has been talking about off and on in the last, mm-hmm. I don't know, since what, New York Comic Con or something like that? Or maybe right, no, maybe right. it was San Diego. I One of those big cons. Uh, a couple other things that I that I liked. Uh, what would you think of um, the updated Mordru, the demon gangster? Yeah. Boy, t- <laughs> that was one of my my uh, my note points, Peter, was that if... Because Mordru historically has been uh, one of the m- more potent villains in in their history um you know he has this 
the unfortunate uh, issue with uh, being um, what uh, trapped early, and you know he gets trapped in something, and and he's he becomes inert, so that they're they're constantly um, uh, burying him. <laughs> uh, beyond that, though, you know he he uses magic, and uh, he, he there's been a lot of interesting Legion stories built around him and his machinations. Uh, the fact that he is so uh, dispensed so easily in this by four legionnaire, well, three legionnaires and Joe Nah, I don't know. I just like okay, if this, if it, what does this mean? This, this is Mordru, and you know, and I, I am, I'm bringing in, I'm bringing in the past versions of this character, of course. But if this is Mordru, and this is how he is, you know, he just gets punched out <laughs> by by Joe. Um, what does that mean uh, in terms of the the villains they're going to be encountering? Uh, is this is this a is this a, a subtle message saying that um, this is not your your dad's legion? This is something other. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it um, uh, if if Mordru could be dispatched so easily, then boy, wait till you see the 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 next set of villains we're going to throw at you and the legion. You know, uh, right. so I, I was very curious about that. I took it that Mostly. way too. Yeah. You know, they demoted him to a demon gangster. You know, yeah, like, gangster. That's yeah. so that's so weird to to think of. Uh, yeah, I I, I kind of took it like that, and and um, you know, they may use him again later, but I, I sort of felt well, I kind of like that. You know, use what what's familiar to longtime readers to bring him in to give him just a little bit of a hook, and then go right. Like we're not gonna. This isn't that legion, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I and I actually like the design of it, design of the character too. Oh yeah, and, I thought that was interesting um, um, refresh of of the character. Yeah, that's a perfect word for it, you know. Um, do you want to talk about? Um, no, oh, it's so hard because it's not like we really see a lot of them in action. But <laughs> speaking of refreshing, like some of the characters, we've got to live mm-hmm. with a few of the characters a little more. What do you think of like Karate Kid and Wildfire and Starboy or your boy, Joe Na, right? I know, Front right? center for the first six pages. I know. That's that's one thing I loved, of course. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the, the five-year-later Legion because Joe was pretty predominant in those first several issues. Um, so that was nice to see. Uh, I I thought they did a pretty good job on a couple, you know, you, you without without being explicit, you get a sense of if you know, of course, you know, Ultra Boy, you know his his power set, but they don't announce it. You know, it's just showing how he deals with Mordru that you get a sense of what he can do, and I thought that was nice. Uh, there's actually one I I God, I wish they would bring page numbers back. Um, <laughs> right after he defeats Mordru with that punch. They, he he races over to that container that that holds the trident and and you see the the typical super speed type uh, depiction. So you, mm-hmm. you know again a subtle a subtle thing that they show on in that one panel. Um, I I love the look of the other three characters: Karate Kid, Wildfire, and Starboy. Uh, I thought that was a great um, uh, update to them. Uh, the only other thing I, I would say about it is that that banter between Wildfire and Karate Kid, uh, which we we touched on a little bit, but you know that's that to me that was like the first, uh, I guess, real Bendisy type dialogue that we get. Um, yeah, but it, to me it's okay, and I like the way you describe that. You know, with uh, you know uh, uh, teenagers or you know young people. You get a group of them together, and they're excited about something, and yeah, they'll they'll banter back and forth, and they'll, um, you know, in a very friendly way, uh, put down each other and that kind of stuff. Um, or at least, you know, when when I was younger, that's what my friends and I did. So mm-hmm. that with that sin that felt very real and very familiar. So I I like that. It's it's also interesting how Starboy is the resident twenty first century expert. Uh, in this rendition, and I, I again, uh, I might I might have missed some things along the way uh, for those those uh, Legion volumes that I have not read, uh, but I don't recall Starboy being that that character mm-hmm. um, uh, before. Uh, but it makes a certain amount of sense given his most previous incarnation being, and we talked about you know uh, him as a central figure in the last Tales of the Legion Project podcast. With mm-hmm. the uh, the the Justice League versus Fatal Five movie, 
um, with 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 uh, Starboy being back in that time period, that you know, in a roundabout way, kind of makes sense that he would have that that kind of knowledge. But you know, this is not that character, so you know, it's a, it's a weird mix of <laughs> previous previous incarnations and and what that all that means. So, yeah, and we get a couple other things too. We get um, uh, brainy. Uh, when he's looking at the trident, you can see like a beam coming from his yeah, forehead band. I I love that. Right. So again, something small, uh, just to showcase that. Um, uh, we get to see Karate Kid in action, but that's that's kind of obvious. Or or wildfires, fire. You know, that's kind of obvious. Well, and he also refers to it as his wildfire. Mm-hmm. So that was an interesting little change too. We didn't really get much else in terms of what they can do, um, power set wise, but I imagine that'll that'll come. You know, you don't want to, mm-hmm. uh, or I guess we could talk about the whole tag thing, the Frickman tag thing. Oh yeah, um, not a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's so. Uh, in case people don't know, I so I was like, okay, why is it? Why are they called Frickman tags? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I I I did a little bit of research, and um, there was a. There was an interview with uh, Brian Michael Bendis about this, and so the right. backstory of this is uh, that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff, Peter, but uh, Matt Fraction used something similar in his X Men run, which I had not read, um, and so uh, I guess as a birthday present, uh, Fraction said that Bendis could use those in something, and uh, it took him years before he he felt like Bendis felt like he could use them and and the legion if uh, he I guess he decided that the using them here in the legion uh made a lot of sense because you could they could be uh they could be um expository elements in story right. and so I I like that aspect of my 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 kind of snide comment in in the synopsis was um they should be called Levitt's tags or something because, you know, <laughs> while they weren't in story, well, no, they were because uh, Levitt's also did those Encyclopedia Galactica entries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, Levitt's was doing this decades before. So I, I don't, uh, I don't understand why uh, Matt Fraction gets all the love here. <laughs> that's, that's my, <laughs> that's my, the, the, the origin of my snide comment. But I, but I like, I like those Frickman tags. I think it's a good way to make it seem futuristic uh, and still provide, new readers and remind uh, us old readers who these characters are and, and what they're what they're doing and whatnot uh, so I thought that was cool um, but I will say uh, I'll tag this on too and I've and I mentioned this before in other in previous episodes you know what is privacy in the 31st century because there does, does yeah. it does not seem to exist <laughs> yeah I did like and, the idea of, uh, of it too except <laughs> It's quickly dropped. It's explained and then never really used. You know, I mean, yeah. it's used like for that one scene. So maybe that's something that'll that'll happen after this issue. But I, I hope they do use it because they just talked about it. So it's like, yeah, know, they make a big deal. Do? Yeah. 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 So. Well, and, and it's weird because I'll just, you know, this to me, this is a. This is just a. Um, uh, a technical point. Um why are they behind the characters? <laughs> and and at, at at shoulder height, it appears to be they they do seem to be doing that consistently. Where if you're in front of the person, you can't really see it, and if you're behind the person, you're seeing it backwards. <laughs> so what is the point of these things? Yeah, I don't anyway. think they got a handle on it just yet. Yeah, <laughs> but that's good. I mean, I, I like the future of it you know mm-hmm. even it, mm-hmm. and it's also taking like you said taking a comic book uh trope and actually putting it in story okay i dig that yeah. i dig that yeah i, I like that yeah. too um what did you think of the like this, since we're talking about futuristic elements in the book uh we have not only the fact that we have new earth as these dome cities but then uh we have we we, we are introduced to the look of new new metropolis uh, we see that in a few panels. Um, and then we also have new, I don't know, wait, is it new Gotham or is it, no, it's planet, planet Gotham. Gotham. So I originally, Peter, I read that as that is one of the, the dome cities, but that doesn't make sense now. Cause it does say 
planet Gotham. So right, yeah. Anyway, and, but and Jonas says he says you know we were we've been chasing this trident all through the Andromeda galaxy, so it's even different from the Milky Way galaxy that mm-hmm. that Earth is located in. Um, uh, you know, shades of of five years later, shades of DC one million. Um, uh, you know, DC one million, uh, Gotham or uh, the Batman of the future was in charge of Pluto, which was oh, kind that's of right. like mm-hmm. you know, it was like where all of his futuristic b- beings or villains were being held. I guess, um, yeah, fine. You know, again, that's a Legion thing. Um, I like the whole domed aspect, uh, the destruction of, of the earth, because number one, it gives us a story point, uh, as, as some of the other legionnaires talked about, you know, like the destruction of earth was a point in their history. That's tragic, but it also taught them a lot of things, taught them lessons. So my hope is that we get to see whatever that is. Um, the design of it is, is pretty cool. It feels like we might be saving Earth somehow or maybe starting a new Earth or whatever. The whole thing with uh, um, it's mentioned twice that the Trident can create oceans or could or could save a planet. Um, I like that. I mean, it's it's you got to be you got to have some future elements. We talked about this before. Uh, it takes place in the future. You can't be so bizarre and strange that it just puts off readers, but you got to have something Mm-hmm. And I think they they do a good job of making the team look different in ways that they've they've only sort of touched on before, um, giving characters different skin color. Um, I still wish there might have been one or two more aliens, but Doctor Fate looks like, uh, or the Doctor Fate character looks like they have four arms or six mm-hmm. arms or something. Um, I, I I did want a little bit more alien stuff. I mean, if they're talking about the United Planets, it feels like there should be something a little. I mean, I guess the president has some kind of, but she's still humanoid, right? There's still some some aspect of her that's humanoid. So, um, the Frickman tags, if if they're used. In interest, it's it's kind of like uh, five years later, what the Omnicon, which was used, I think, a lot. Uh, it would pop up and just give you exposition. Um, this is what I mean when I initially read it, where I was like, <laughs> I've read all this before. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's kind of, it's just unfair. But, um, and I was just dis- where I was disappointed it was the Horaz. Um, oh, if, good. if that's going to if that's going to be yeah. their cannon fodder villain, right? Just a simple villain that they can defeat quickly, and so we can see their powers in issue two. Um, they created something new, the Horaz. I mean, are they any different than the Blight? Are they any different than yeah um, all the other? aliens we've seen over time so they wanted to create something new i don't know they could have just reused an, an older one just because but mm-hmm. they didn't um well, well and uh speaking of the horaz the, that was one of the things that that i really touched on it's and it's just a little thing but there are two comments made about the horaz uh yeah as i said um joe refers to them as uh oh, 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 no, trash. Shoot, what was it yeah horaz trash and then when they show up towards the end of the issue uh, Lightning Lightning Lad says uh, at, at Superboy's question, you know, Horaz, worst in the galaxy. And it's not I guess very coming... forethought of, forethinking of them, is it? Not very yeah, like, yes. inclusive. <laughs> yes, yes, that, exactly. That's where, that's where I was going to go. It's like you have all these, these the members of these different uh, planets and species and uh, races, genders, all this stuff in the Legion, and yet that's their attitude towards a. You know, I, 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 you know, I get it. We need we need a generic villain group or something, but I, yeah, it just it just that did not ring mm, true to the universe that I'm being shown here. Uh, but you know, who knows? Uh, maybe at the very least, it's 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 just uh, uh, telling us that uh, discrimination is still a thing, even in the 31st century. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. 
uh, I, you know, I, as much as I've read Bendis's work, uh, this, this rings true from him in that he likes to touch on those things, those elements in his stories. So I, 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 I can see that, but you know, it, it, did, it didn't work for me in terms of the Legion itself. But then again, <laughs> we, we basically lived with the Legionnaires for like 30 seconds. So, you know, what am I really basing that on? Right. Maybe this is Superboy's influence. You know, maybe maybe he turns that kind of stuff around. Because I mm. also, when that when when he called them trash, I was like, oh, see, that's if you're really futurizing your team, you would think about those kind of things. So it's either one, you, as you said, going to play out or two, it's just generic writing trope that I didn't. I was like, wait a minute. You can't do that. Because there's a scene, there's another bit of dialogue that I was like, okay, see, this is what you do when Superboy says, um, "You Legion people," and and Triplica Girl says, "Legionnaires." Uh, you know, he corrects he she corrects his speaking of of what to call them, right? And even if it's just for the reader, you know, that's what we call members of the Legion superheroes. We call them Legionnaires. Um, you know. Superboy saying you people is that's not right. Like nowadays, you know, you don't you, somebody comes up to me and says, oh, your people or you people. I'm going to punch him in the face. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to say something about Spanish people or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So it may not be as deep as that. But when you put it into context of Jonah calling them trash or worst of the galaxy, um, my hope is that Bendis has a plan for this. Otherwise, it's very lazy writing. Yeah. And yeah. in a book that now look, this this is this is an argument I'm I'm sort of getting immersed into with um Deep Space Nine in Star Trek, where um there's some criticism of in the Star Trek universe we should be better than what happens in Deep Space Nine, right? Like the darkness or or nobody should be questioning Starfleet or whatever. And I sort of want to go, uh 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 uh, wait a minute, no. It's a universe. There's going to be, I don't care how utopia it is. It's only a utopia for some people. So it's not that I don't expect this kind of attitude to be present. And and maybe it does speak to the different cultures of the Legion, like I think you were talking about. So so my hope is that uh, that gets that gets looked at. Because if it doesn't, that's that's kind of like, mm, that's not good. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, even, you know, I don't know how, how much this plays into anything that we're discussing, but uh, it just did remind me uh, when we first got some initial character designs released, um, uh, there was some backlash to that. Uh, you know, the Legion was still a little too white. And then when we, when it was finally, you know, when they finally appeared in some issues, you know, there were changes that were made. And I don't know if that was in direct response to that criticism. Uh, I would kind of guess not specifically, but, you know, perhaps. But, um, you know, at least some people were thinking about it and some changes were made. So at least, you know, there is that, you know, and as I, I agree with you. There's probably not enough of that, <laughs> uh, especially the, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen, as you said, more alien cultures or more alien looking um, legionnaires, perhaps, yeah. than we do, uh, you know, besides a, a skin color change. And then they went and gave the black man lightning powers, just like every other black character. Oh, my God. I did not even think of that. That's, oh, geez. <laughs> It's a gag now. It really has become a gag, you know, oh. black lightning and static shock and, um, um, you know, now lightning lad. And, and there's 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 a, a whole bunch of other ones where everybody's like, why is it always got to be the black guy's got lightning powers? <laughs> yeah. That, what does that mean? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um. I don't really have much more to say. The artwork's great. Um, mm -hmm. um, you're right about some of the coloring that's, I, I don't know, maybe some of it has to do with the process of creating the book that might have made some things a little dark, a little muddy. But because I really liked the way they shadowed Ultra Boy in the beginning, almost yeah. as if you thought he was Superboy at first or Mon right. or something. And I did. Yeah, yeah I, I exactly yeah. did. Yeah. Or yeah, uh, Mon I think maybe that's what I was thinking of. 
So, um, and look, there's a lot of characters and, and their costumes are busy. So good on Jordi Belair for oh, yeah. keeping that together. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole other nitpick of mine that it's not just Ryan Sook, man. Why, why do they have to make these costumes like this? <laughs> <laughs> um, can we, uh, we kind of touched on this, but I want to, I want to uh, talk about those two scenes um, with, with two female characters, one, the Saturn girl and Superboy scene. And then there's that page with Rose. I don't know. There's, there's okay. not much to say about that, but let's, right. let's start with the Rose one. Um, uh, Cause that was one of our questions, concerns, or perhaps even a criticism is that we we get this this uh, point of view character in Legion of Superheroes Millennium, which is Rose and Thorn, and uh, if that's the case uh, with her arriving in the thirty first century, and that's when we first see New Earth, uh, what is her role here? What is wh- why is she with the Legion? What what influence does she have over the Legionnaires or with the Legionnaires? And and uh, and so she's she's set up to be this very important person in the the legion universe and we get a bit of dialogue <laughs> and she appears in one two three four panels and that's it um so i hope that we get to see a little bit more of her as the i don't know um uh, advisor to the legion of some in some capacity and mm-hmm. this is just this page is obviously just to remind us. Oh yeah, remember Rose from Legion of Superheroes Millennium? Yeah, here she is. <laughs> but if a new reader was reading this issue and didn't read that Millennium book, they would be like, "I have no idea what that is." Right, right. And that was one of the things I was I was going to bring up as well as uh, earlier when you were talking because how much of this is dependent upon that you read uh, the Legion appearances and the other issues preceding this. Yeah, and uh, there there's a bit of that. Uh, this is a, this is a major thing. The fact that Superboy is appearing in the 31st century, that, and that ties us actually back to that scene with Saturn Girl. You know, uh, you can kind of get the gist. Oh, here's Superboy, and he's arriving. But there's obviously a backstory there if you didn't read those other issues. And so, I I, I, I question uh, the the way that this is being presented uh, from that standpoint because. I I read that stuff, so it makes total sense to me. But but as someone who hadn't done so, I, they would just be totally lost, right? It, there's yeah. not enough here, or is there enough here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it'll mean anything <laughs> next issue. But I, oh well, yeah, I, that, that's the other thing too. Is yeah, wh- what are we going to get next? The rose thing just pissed me off because I was like, <laughs> the, you spent two issues on rose from the millennium micro series nothing on the legion of superheroes and then we flip it we get legion of superheroes and we get nothing on rose ah. i don't get it maybe that's uh that's uh, bennis's um creative vision that 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 flipping you know there there is a there is a, a balance that he's trying to create here i don't know i'm i'm totally making stuff up now <laughs> um but uh, I, uh, I guess the last thing I'll touch on uh, in regards to that scene with Saturn Girl and Superboy, you already touched on the major thing that I really liked, that uh, that um, you, get, you really get a sense of Saturn Girl in this. She's very mm-hmm. excited, but she's very earnest, uh, very direct. Um, that might be something else that she we see uh, later in the issue. But I love the composition of this page with the faces and then the 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 them facing each other and then you get to see them in the bubble. I, I, lo- I just really like that composition, how we're, we're kind of um, moving through time literally here, but also the space on the page and how they're interacting with each other. I just thought that was really d- done really well. And Sook and uh, Bel Air did an awesome job on that page. Right. Yeah. The Legion has its own language visually. And, you know, if you go back to the silver age, whenever they, pushed the time bubble or, or Superboy pushed the time bubble or they were traveling in the time bubble, you would see them going through some rainbow-esque um, swirly patterns of all the years, right? And it'll say it'll say 1966, 19, uh, or 2066, and then 2566, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, there's there's language that they couldn't, they can create visual language, vi- visual cues and clues. So that whole emerging from the time thing um 
was was great in that page as you referenced and it's the same reason why i kind of like the design of new earth um because it gives the book something that other comics can quickly bring in and we recognize it right away like i did like the idea that the whole metropolis is the headquarters but we didn't i don't think i don't think we saw an actual main headquarter just yet right Mm -hmm. um you know Unless, uh, unless where they where they landed the time bubble, that's that is where it is. But we're not seeing enough of it to really understand right. that that's the Legion headquarters, right? The, just the like the Le- itself, just like the Legion rings. I mean, that's you know, it's all this stuff is 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 what made the Legion great. Um, so I hope they they I hope they just keep referencing that or or coming up with new stuff mm-hmm. in that vein. And I guess we should explain why we thought the cliff, why we keep saying the cliffhanger was junk. Um, we get a one page thing with the president, as we talked about. She's worried that Superboy has come from the past. It's against rules and regulations. Um, and uh, uh, so she's concerned that this president, this alien looking president is concerned and she has some lackeys around her. And then. And then they say, uh, oh, and they stole something, Aquaman's trident. It's a complete affront to everything we've been to be continued. And we get a shot of her face, and she looks like Lady Styx from the old 52 series. Mm. I was like, wait, what? That's your cliffhanger? Yeah. That's where you put the commercial? That's weird. That That's, I thought that was um, amateur. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what to say else to say about that either. That's just I I felt the same way. Um and and right, you know right even I'm going to get really nitpicky now, but right before that, this is this is the thing I was talking about in regards to Bendis's dialogue. You know, the the president is complaining about the legion pulling Superboy out of the time stream without asking permission. That breaks the number one rule of the United Planets and then the the the, the lackey is, uh, is saying some stuff and she just says, "Stop. No, seriously." Why would they do that? I mean, that uh, that's that's where I, I you know the the, the Bendis dialogue I, I kind of um, uh, bump on because that that just seems so weird uh, yeah. and out of character for uh, which is weird to say because you know we don't know much about this character but it, it's it's very obviously Bendis doing Bendis uh, writing here yeah. and then yeah well, you get that tagged on to be continued it's just like what the hell is that. I mean, this is where an editor needs to step up. I don't care if it's Bendis or not. Like, you need to go, mm, you really think that's a good choice? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because See, I, think there's also, I think there's also a mistake on this page because the lackeys, like, you know, they did it in honor of unit, United D. D, like as in, as in un, Unity Day, but saying United Day. Right. right? It's supposed to be I, Unity Day, right? Right. And... Well, and that's that's why you you mentioned earlier that that the president says something about Superman from the 20th century, and so is um, is this just is this just them being is this Bendis being cute because here we are a thousand years in the future and so certain details are not quite right, but yeah, that why would it. this person this this uh, this uh, this lackey here be uh, or uh, misidentify something that's so important that that the Legion would then go a thousand years in the past to retrieve the person who inspired the United plan, uh, United plants in the first place. It, that doesn't make any sense. Un- unless that is the story. Maybe that's the story. Maybe it's not just about saving planet earth. It's about saving the United planets, the core, mm. the foundation of why it exists in the first place. That I, I guess I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be okay then. Yeah, because uh, Joe Nye even says it earlier when he's trying to catch that ship and he falls and, and he looks to the bystanders and says, that's okay, hero, Age of Heroes stuff, as if that's like a new concept brought back again, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, do do we, I, I well, I mean, in the previous issues in which the Legion have appeared, we kind of get the sense that they've just, they've just formed. Right. I think. And right. this is this is you know they they in this first issue they've not been around that long. How long yeah. we don't know yet, but yeah. And that's why they're all confused about wildfires. Like you know you're violating mm, something, 
uh, or <laughs> later they say, you know, I think we broke a couple of those new rules or those rules. I don't know which ones. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the the charter that they probably just put together and they're not all that familiar with right now. Right. I, I kind of like that aspect though. It's like, yeah, you know, they they just form like, well, uh, we we had a rule, right? Uh, are we breaking it? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. And I just noticed that the United Planet. United Planets headquarters kind of looks like the Rock of Eternity a little bit, the old Shazam Rock of Eternity. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. All right, we don't do rating. What, what would you give a rating out of one through five? What would you give for this? Oh. We don't do this often, but what, what oh. would you give? Um. Uh, a three. How many? How many Legion L's do you give it? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. three out of five? Yeah. Yeah. I sort of feel the same too. I might even go 2.5, but the artwork <laughs> is still is lovely to look at. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. And Sook is always good at this. Good at using double page spreads and double page spreads, but that have different panels in it. And and sometimes, you know, you got to work a little hard. Like, where am I going here? Oh, okay. I see. But um, I, I like that. I, I I really did like the the... the the layout of this book. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the strongest uh, elements of this book is 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 the is that and and the the structure of it. I I I was I'm not a big fan of a lot of two page spreads and uh, they're like what four in here three or four yeah and I didn't feel like they were wasted right except for maybe the so, last one so much to look at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's yeah. With all those characters, you kind of need that space uh, to 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 take uh, or make use of. So the other thing, as we talked about in the beginning of the the episode, that we're going to do is just uh, talk about how this book holds up in terms of a reboot compared to previous reboots and. Um, I don't think we need to go in depth of those other two issues like we just did with this issue, but mm-hmm. um, we read Legion of Superheroes uh, issue zero, and then we from ni- from around the time of zero hour, and then we read Legion of Superheroes number one from two thousand five. Um, let's uh, let's dig in and let, you know as as yet another reboot. I don't know what they're going to call this one. Um, oh, is it like uh, three boot and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we had reboot yeah. or the Archie Legion. We had three boot from two thousand five. We had pre boot, which was when they brought back the the uh, original Legion for oh, Paul right. Levitz. Yeah, and now we have you know I I sort of consider this the Ultimate Legion, but um, we'll see where we go. <laughs> Can we? Are we allowed to mix uh, company terminology like that? No. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, to be to be honest, I thought the Archie Legion was very much the ultimate Legion before Ultimate even existed. Yeah, that's I would agree with that. Yeah. Um. So just real quick, some background stuff. Legion of Superheroes issue zero from August 1994, 25 years ago. Uh, that volume, that era would run from Legion of Superheroes issue 62 all the way through 125. It would then turn into a bunch of miniseries. It would turn into a series called The Legion. And then eventually that would um, be wiped away for yet another reboot, which was Legion of Superheroes issue one from December 2004, 15 years ago. And that volume would run for 50 issues. Um, It was called Legion of Superheroes. It was called Supergirl and the Legion of Superheroes. And then for the last um, bunch of issues, it reverted back to Legion of Superheroes when Jim Shooter made his return to uh, the title. Um, so if we go back to Legion of Superheroes Zero, around the time of Zero Hour, um, this is by Mark Wade, Tom McCraw. Those are the writers. Tom McCraw, also the colorist. Stuart Eminen and Ron Boyd on art and Bob Pinaha on letters. Um Again, DC was kind of uh, really putting some new energy into their line around this time. 
uh, out of zero hour. I mean, we had Peter David on Aquaman. Um, we had Impulse showing up in Mark's Wade, Mark Wade's Flash. We had Kyle, Ra Kyle Rayner had just become the new Green Lantern a bunch of months prior to this. Tim Drake was in his first year as Robin. The new Starman series had begun. So this was, you know, kind of a, a high point in the early 90s for DC. So we got this uh, new Zero Hour and this new Legion team. Um, so in terms of that reboot and that first issue, what did you what did you think as as a reboot and what did you think in, maybe in comparison to this new issue uh what were your thoughts about that zero issue well uh i'll preface this by saying um i i have always enjoyed the zero hour event and uh uh but regardless of that uh this legion of superheroes number zero issue is where i broke off with the legion at that time oh interesting um yeah it it, it uh I, as I recall, you know, this is a long time ago now, uh, so my memory is not all that great, but uh, I recall not particularly caring about this, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, what, what they call them, the batch, SW6 batch or something like that, when mm -hmm. they reintroduced the, you know, the, the Silver Age Legionnaires in, in, the, in the, the story. And uh, when they did the Zero Hour thing and I read this issue, it's like, oh, well, this is this is retelling the classic uh, origin story of the Legion with uh, a bunch more details and maybe some characterization, slight characterization changes, but not much else seemed different. Mm -hmm. And so, I, when when you when you talked about talking about this issue and and the other one from two thousand four, um, I don't really consider that uh, this Legion uh, superheroes number zero to be really a reboot of uh, at all. It's, it's very much what came before only slightly different. Yeah. And, and to pull the curtain back, Eric emailed me and said, um, should we read Legionnaire zero, which is like the second part to this. And I said, well, you know, if all they got is one issue to bring us in, Let's just read the first one and see what happens. And after I read it and saw that, you know, pretty great early Stuart Eminent artwork mm -hmm. um, and, and the origin played out very much like you said, they just, they kind of played safe, right? They just took what we already knew, threw in some details, added some new stuff. You know, Triplicate Girl is RJ Brand's secretary um phantom girl's mom is the president at the time although you don't get that in this issue right away um th there's new elements that they throw in uh that still follow legion lore the way the way the team builds but that first one by itself i read it and thought huh if they would have kept going like this i probably would have liked that legion because it's not far off from what we got previous to it mm -hmm. um so so i said to eric you know we weren't going to read that second issue and i didn't read the second the late legionnaire zero i just flipped through it um because I, I wanted to see if they had any letter columns or anything talking about you know that era it really is the second part that becomes the new archie legion in tone because of the different artist they use um is it philip moy i think um, Philip and Jeffrey Moy, they, the tone of, of what the Archie Legion is doesn't happen until that second issue. So yeah, we probably should have read them both, but, um, the first issue, <laughs> the first issue alone, the zero issue, I kind of was like, ah, oh, this is kind of boring. Um, yeah. it's just, it's everything I knew. It's, it's very safe. It's very humanoid white centric again. Um, I like the artwork. Um, we do get the idea that RJ Brand is trying to, um, has hit upon an idea, uh, with the Legion, you know, by seeing these three youths rescue him, which is the classic story. And I, I like what he says to the president later on, where he says, um, uh, you know, 
look, the, uh, if you want galactic unity, there's that word, right? Um, shared tech, the United, Pla the United Planets is galactic unity, shared tech, common alliance, good ideas, but ephem ephemeral. Words and concepts. You're selling a grand vision, but nothing to look at. And, um, <laughs> boy, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty uh, good summary of this book. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's when he comes up with the idea of the Legion. So at least you get an idea of what the Legion is going to be used as even mm -hmm. in that first issue. That's true. So I do appreciate, I appreciate it for that. Brand also says in that issue, when things aren't going your way, it's time to find a new way. And I thought that that really was Mark Wade going, you know, the previous era of Legion has become too wild. I've I've come into too many arguments with Keith Giffen and the beer bombs, and I'm now going to do things my way. <laughs> um, the other thing that I liked about it is. There's a hook. R.J. Brand has a hook, right? The United Planets wouldn't exist without R.J. Brand because because of his Stargate technology. And uh, I like that, you know, that that had a feel very similar to having New Earth being the thing that brought really cemented the unity of the United Planets, you know, all these different cultures creating this planet under, you know, in Bendis's book. Um, rallying around the destruction of Earth. So there, you know, there's kind of similar elements going on there. But when I look at like Zero versus Bendis's book, um, I, I tend to favor Bendis's uh, version. Just felt a little dry, this Zero issue. Mm -hmm. And I, I will add, since, since you did bring up the Legionnaires Zero, if uh, having now read that issue... Now what? What do you say? This is twenty five years ago. Yeah. Uh, had I, because I had not read that issue back then, uh, because I had dropped the Legionnaires title uh, by then, uh, uh, and if I had, I probably would have kept with it a little bit longer, and maybe maybe through the end, because I because mm -hmm. I felt like that second that second part that Legionnaires Zero issue um, gave me enough to to like I was saying before about this legion number one issue enough to be curious about to to continue on with it right some the what are the new changes what are the subtle changes what are the mm -hmm. um you know again and a lot of it works in hindsight right mark wade oh, yeah. was an editor for a long time prior to this he can play around with you know a new way to make triplicate girl giving them different personalities that was only really hinted at before um, he can give, uh, well, one of the things he does in that first Legion of Superheroes Zero issue is he talks about the age of heroes, right? If you're not going to have a Superboy to base the Legion on, well, you can just extrapolate it further and say the entire 20th century is inspiration. Um, and they see pictures of Superman and Batman and Flash and Wonder Woman, and that becomes their basis for what it means to be a hero a thousand years later. Which is no different than what Bendis did in Millennium. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, a little, a little dry. Um, that first zero issue. Uh, uh, a little safe, very safe, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now contrast wanna... that with the other one. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> so you're right. Legion Superheroes number one. It shipped December two thousand four. I keep saying two thousand five, but that was the cover date. So um, 15 years ago, as of yeah. this month, right? What would you think of that one? Well, so this is, like I said, uh, I dropped the Legion at the time, about the time of Legion of Superheroes number zero. And I didn't go back to the Legion uh, until this book, this this relaunch, this reboot, with uh, uh, Mark Wade still writing this, um, which is interesting comparison between uh, what, what he did before. Right. With Barry Kitson on art. Um, uh, I, to me, this book, this Legion of Superheroes, 2004, 2005, uh, series, um, it has a lot more in common with what we're, what we're experiencing with this latest version of the Legion of Superheroes, where you've got familiar concepts, familiar tropes, um, familiar costumes, 
but uh, things are different. And, and the core, like we were talking about what, in terms of what the Legion could be about, uh, I mean, they very clearly spell that out, I think, uh, pretty well in this first issue. And it's not, it's not something to do with, um, like, like with uh, in uh, issue zero with like the United Planets. I mean, it, it's related, but it's not, it's not directly tied to it. You know, it's, it's a movement. It's a youth movement across the galaxy, which I thought was pretty, a pretty interesting change. And the Legion is at the core of this, but it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's not something that is. Uh, they're not defining it. It's it's they're doing their superhero thing uh, in the in in uh, the galaxy, but it's really to me. And this, this and this is now I'm going to get into uh, the complaint of my uh, of this series is that they didn't really do enough with that whole movement because I I stayed on this book for almost till the end uh, of the run. I have I have all the issues now, uh, but I haven't read all that. But um, I think it was right before Jim Shooter came back where I I had stopped reading that book. And, uh, so they, so they kind of dropped that element, which was too bad, but, but based on this first issue, it, it is, I think, uh, a really interesting take on it. You got a lot of, a lot of similarities, like I said, uh, with this and the new, the new Legion book, because, you know, Chameleon Boy looks, uh, sufficiently more alien. Um, we have different characters who are, uh, have different, uh, skin colors and the personalities are a little different, you know, so, in a sense, it's almost like uh, Bendis and company are channeling this series more than any other uh, any other Legion that we've read before. Eric, I think it's better. <laughs> you do? Okay. I do. I read. I haven't read this issue in a long time. Probably, probably, I've only ever read it once. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you. They did drop that whole youth movement thing within that first year, I think, um, or two, but, but as a, as a first issue, as just a first issue, comparing it to the zero issue, it is better. Oh yeah. And there, there's a lot of it that I was like, Oh, see, this is, this is what I'm missing. I'm missing. And they, they did it the same way, just like you're talking about. They had a whole bunch of characters that um you either know or you don't know right we're seeing a whole new kind of feeling of what the future is in terms of design but also in terms of i love that opening splash of of them saying we've we've become complacent and it's and and we hate it you know Mm -hmm. um it puts them at a starting point that brings you in it's almost like in those first three pages they basically did in three four pages what millennium did in two issues yeah yeah good point and i don't know there was just something about it the whole eat it grandpa thing i mean we're living in the world of okay (laughs) boomer right now yes (laughs) and eat it grandpa is right there front and center like i when i read that i was like i kind of want to read the rest of them now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um but as a first issue i mean yeah you can compare artwork and some other things but i don't know and when it comes to me understanding what the legion is that first issue really laid it out mm-hmm. regardless of what comes later and yes i know we said that we got we're going to give bendis some time but um if i had to pick out of all the reboots Um, that's the issue. That's the one that I thought kind of really spoke to. And, and again, it is Mark Wade. Um, he's doing it in hindsight. It is very interesting that they are both Mark Wade to -hmm. a degree. And yet he's trying to extrapolate some things. Um, I, I like the whole ending, you know, where Starboy and is talking to invisible kid and saying, Look, they're not here because of us. We're here because of them. Yes, that was kids. that was yes, that was the most interesting aspect of that issue. Yeah. You know, when it came time for the government to come shut us down, they all stood there and they 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 stood up for for us. Um I yeah, there were so many, you're right. There were so many similarities that it was scary and yet 
um, I kind of I, I kind of preferred that first issue. So mm-hmm. I, I I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah that that's uh that issue is like a, a four and a half for me. Right. Right. Let me see. Around that around that time at DC, I mean, they had just finished Identity Crisis. Under the Red Hood was going on at Batman. Gail Simone was well into her second year at Birds of Prey. Green Lantern Rebirth was around. Um, Rucka was on Wonder Woman. I mean, this this was a high point for DC at that time. I wrote here, there's a philosophy. The, the team is in action. They're still quippy. They're still making the same jokes, right? Like uh, Lightning or Light Lass is like, why did I ever date you? And then she's like, why did I ever date you? You know? <laughs> But I like that because it kind of spoke to how, in the future, you would hope they are, you know, a little, a little more free sexual sexuality wise or, or relationship wise. They even talk about the gender thing with chameleon, right? He's not mm-hmm. chameleon boy; he's just chameleon. Um, the opening scene with the administrators talking to each other on a screen, yet they're in the same room. Yeah, that's awesome. It- Wade and Kitson, I don't know, I don't know how much either contributed to this, but it, this issue is very prescient of today. Yeah, in a lot of ways, I it was uncanny when I was rereading this. Yeah, you're right, you're right, and I also love that when they went into the headquarters, it's very retro in there, because if you think of like the origins of the Legion of Superheroes, right? They're they're birthed in the Silver Age with all the kooky dialogue and let's go get space ice cream and go visit the space zoo and but it's all drawn by, you know, Kurt Swan and all these older other Silver Age artists who still kind of make it feel like it's from whatever decade that that is, right? Mhm. So here's Wade going, yeah, they have old comic books and they have pinball machines and they have whatever else so it's like you're still keeping that Silver Age feel that made the Legion popular, but yet it, it's given a new twist with 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 this future uh, by just having it in their headquarters, you know? Um, I guess it's similar to Bendis trying to use those little uh, tags for their names and things like that, right? It's like taking a very comic book thing but using it for your advantage. So that was another element that I really liked about that team looking backwards but yet still existing in the future. Yeah, I uh I wrote here way more inspiring than the zero hour issue or Bendis's run. Mhm. Bendis's first issue. Yeah. Yeah. Still very humanoid centric, still very, you know, I I wanted a bit more alien stuff in it, but um Yeah, if I had to pick out of the 3, I'd pick that one, so. Yeah. I thought it was I kind know. of fun to go back and look at that at those issues. Yeah. Yeah, because I probably haven't read that issue in, since it debuted. So yeah, it, that was a nice, a nice uh, trip down memory lane. <laughs> and it and it uh, speaks to what we've been saying before we even knew Bendis was going to take over. You know, how do you bring this concept to new readers mm-hmm. in a way that works? And and we already we have a roadmap and. Um, uh, the one that Bendis, the path that Bendis decided to take, um, has many other footprints in it already. And it's it's very interesting because uh, thinking back on that issue and and the hype about the Legion returning at that time got me very excited. And uh, when I when I read the issue and it's like, oh, well, this this is not this is not what it, how it was before, but I was still interested and excited about well what's coming next and we only had one issue it wasn't like like the previous reboot where we had the zero issues to re to reintroduce the ideas before we got into the you know the main story in in the books and uh in in comparison to what bendis and company are doing where they had several issues in superman a that two issue millennium series to build up to this Mark Wade and Kitson and the rest did it all in that one issue. Yeah. And I, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how we're going to follow up on, on this new current series. Um, 
uh, either because of the delays or, as I said, our regular Legion Project podcast episodes um, are getting chunky with, you know, just all different kinds of stuff we want to talk about. So Eric did have a good thought uh, at one point before about, you know, maybe instead of talking issue by issue, we we wait until five or six issues have passed and kind of talk about it in terms of, of how it might be in a trade. That way, if someone picks it up uh, or listens to the episode, they can just, you know, listen. Um, they can pick up the trade or they have a whole bunch of issues. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we react to maybe some of the other um, issues. It may also depend on do we have those issues before we record another episode, right? Like even if we want to give quick thoughts issue by issue um, and then maybe do a fuller episode on a bunch of issues. We'll, we'll see how we plan it out. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Yeah. So this has been the Tales of the Legion Project podcast episode. Um, we will be getting another one of these uh, like in a, you know, a few a few more episodes um, because we know that we're coming up on the miniseries of Legionnaires 3. Uh, so in our regular Legion Project discussion, that series is going on. Um, but we're going to wait till all four issues have passed and um, in the chronology that we're following from the 80s. And we, uh, I'm fairly certain our next Tales episode will be about Legionnaires 3. So by all means, if you have any thoughts on Legionnaires 3, it's never too early to send it to us. Peter at the dailyrios.com. Or you can email me at longboxreview at gmail.com. And let us know what you thought of Bendis' first issue, Bendis and Sook and company, especially if you're a totally new Legion reader. That would be fascinating to see what you thought uh, of this issue. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is where we're going to sign off. Eric, we'll, we'll, I'll see you on our next uh, Legion Project episode. Looking forward to it, Peter. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye.